Hey y'all, thanks for joining the call. We're really excited to have this opportunity today. This major is here with us. Um, my friend Michael is gonna lead us in an introduction um, really quick and then we'll get things started. Hey y'all, my name is Michael. My pronouns are Z and Zir and Zem and we're so grateful for both Radical Kindred and for Miss Major for being able to host us on this call today. So just so much gratitude for everybody for joining us. Um, just wanted to let folks know that this call is gonna be recorded. So if folks are not wanting to be recorded, we suggest that you turn off your camera and you can also change your name by hitting the three little buttons on the top right corner of your screen. So you can have um, as much not, um, anonymity as you'd like. Um, yeah. I also wanted to open the space by offering folks to take a deep breath um, and do a little bit of grounding. So if folks are willing and wanting, um, yeah, we're just gonna take a few deep breaths and think of folks that we would like to bring into this space. So for me, I think of um, transcestors who have come before me and who have paved this way. I think of um, living legends and my kindred that I'm surrounded with. And I think of the people who are gonna come before me. Um, so that's what I'm going to be holding in these um, three breaths. So I invite y'all to um, join with me. A deep grounding breath in one, two, three, and out. The second one, deep in, two, three, and out. And a last deep releasing breath. Deeply in one, two, three, and out. Two, three. Thank you all. So I, again, um, we're so grateful to have folks um, joining us today. Um, there's a few um, folks who are helping to hold down the space with us. So um, the screen that has Black and Boon as the name. Um, Mary is a friend who's gonna be dropping the names of our other hosts who if we're offering any um, yeah, suggestions, um, we ask y'all to respect any like instructions or requests that are made by these folks. Um, and I wanted to offer Liam to give us a little bit of information about Radical Kindred um, yeah, before we start hearing from Ms. Major. Hey y'all, my name is Liam. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm the founder of Radical Kindred and I'm really excited um, to have y'all join us today. This call means a lot to me. Miss Major has been a friend of mine for some time now and I am super grateful for her and everything she's done for our community. Um, we're doing a lot of work here in Boone, North Carolina and Western North Carolina to create space for um, folks in the queer and trans community. Um, we are a small rules face here and I think we're doing things that haven't been done here before um, and a lot of exciting uh, work is coming from Radical Kindred so please tune into our social media and follow um, follow our efforts here. I'm excited in the direction that we're growing and your support uh, means a lot. So thanks for hopping on the call and I'm going to pass it back to Michael to introduce Miss Major and then we'll hear from her. Hi, right, y'all. Michael again, pronouns Z and Zim and Zir. Um, and for those that don't know who Miss Major is, we just wanted to offer a little bit of ground in words. Miss um, Major is a veteran of the historic Stonewall Rebellion and a survivor of the Attica State Prison, a former sex worker, an elder, a mother to many, and a community leader and human rights activist. She is simply mama to many in her community and a living legend. This major has taught so many in the 1960s about liberation from marginalized people, and she is someone we continue to learn from to this day. At the center of her activism is her fierce advocacy for her girls, Black trans women, trans women of color, gender nonconforming and queer peoples, and those who have survived 
police brutality, and the gendered violent prison industrial complex. Ms. Major is formerly the longtime executive director of the San Francisco-based Transgender Gender Variant Intersex Justice Project, which advocates for trans women of color in and outside of prison. She is the she is the recipient of countless awards, proclamations, certificates, and public accolades for decades of work. She is also the subject of a new award-winning documentary feature film, Major. It's on Amazon Prime. Y'all should watch it. And she deserves all the awards for all the seeds she's sown for our people. We are grateful and growing and learning from the bountiful harvest that her wisdom offers. We're so happy to have you, Miss Major. Um, and if you want to share a few words before we take a few questions, we'd like to hear from you now. There we go. Hi, thank you so much for that. How you doing? <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that, you know, especially in these times, we are really suffering. And we're suffering more than most. And the thing that um, I tell the girls to do is to be prepared, always to be prepared to fight and to fight hard because we are always brought up in a secondary sense. You know, it's not something that we think of, they think of right away. So in order to get straight and to understand what has been happening, we've got to fight for it. So that, you know, is really the basis for my, who I am, you know, why I exist, um, what I stand for. And I hope that the girls who aren't on this call or whatever, that they know that I'm with them, that we've got to stand up and, up and fight for it. Right, and we'll get it. We will get it. Okay. Thank you so much, Miss Major. Um, we have a, a few questions already prepared. If we... I thought you might. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do. <laughs> so go ahead. I'm ready. I hope you all aren't sitting anything for me on a computer because I do not have a music here. I don't know, sit about them, but they, they're a really good thing for you, not good for me. <laughs> we so, yeah, we have to hear it. So, um, so I, I just wanted to ask you, it's to start off by asking you um, how the shift has been from going from organizing in uh, the Bay Area to the rural community and uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, um, how that shift has been for you and what life is like for you uh, living in the South now? Well, you know, uh, now it's pretty much uh, the same to everybody. But when I first came down here, it was open. And I wanted to be here because the girls in the South suffered really, really bad. Um, they didn't have the things that the girls in the East Coast or the West Coast had. So in order to bring to them what they needed, I thought, well, let them talk about it, why not go there? So I came here. And um, it's been okay. This pandemic had me no pissed off, but you know, it's the way that it is, you know, and I have to adjust to it. And so I um, I have a house now that I've opened up to transgender girls and guys and people not conforming. But when it's free, you'll be able to come out and stay here, you know, and rejuvenate yourself and relax for a moment you know, and get your nerve together and go back and then fight the good fight. So that's why I'm here. We are so grateful to have you here. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot, honey. It's good to see you. I can see you now, so. 
<laughs> yeah. So what's the next question? It's very good to see you. Hello. Hi. My name is David. My pronouns are David and Dave. And uh, this next question is like, what are you seeing in the current movements with like trans and gender non-conforming folks? Like around that, what are your hopes and what are you excited about? Like, what gets you jazzed? Well, what I'd see is it's going to be hard. Uh, it's never easy for us to get what is due for us. But, you know, I'm hopeful. I'm, I have my fingers and toes crossed. Um, I believe that eventually this time, maybe it'll go through. You know, um, the Black Lives Matter, they don't have all Black lives in that. So we have to push that, you know, we have to get it together so that they understand that we are Black and we are unique unto ourselves. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, honey. <laughs> hey, it's Michael. Pronouns are Zim, Zier, and Zim. Um, yeah, and I wanted to know if you could story tell for a little bit about some of the gems and some of the lessons from both the working girls that you met and worked with at the Stonewall Rebellion and the Black Panthers that you met and worked with during the Attica prison uprising that helped to politicize you. Well, you know, I got the little side because Black came there from Attica when uh, they had the ride there. And it was unbelievable that the state took on that and murdered all of those people that they did. Um, and that, you know, due to the girls that I've seen and known so far, you know, it's hard living this life, you know? And we don't get a chance to live the life of normalcy. We don't get a chance to live in according to the way other people live. But we can do it if we fight for it, you know, if we hold on to it with both hands, you know. Um, it's not easy. It's never going to be easy for us, but eventually it'll get better, I hope, in time. And we'll have a world that will be free to all of us, including us, you know, because if we're not free, they're not free. And they will learn that, you know, in time, they will. Thanks. Mm, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Hi, Tori, she and they pronouns. What's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see as a connection between prison abolition and gender-based policing? Um, well, first of all, there shouldn't be no police. We don't need them. You know, I mean, they're there taking up space, using, you know, using materials that, that need to, we need. Um, there is no, I don't know, if they were gone, we would be so much better off, honestly speaking, because they don't know what they're doing. They have this hierarchy that they teach in the schools that they have um, for brutality, for beating up people, you know? And we don't need that, you know? We need psychologists in there. We need someone who has some sense for change, like us, for change, you know? They need to have a sense of common decency, you know. So whether or not what the, that they're there, <laughs> no, they don't need to be there at all. <laughs> Thank you for the question, honey. <laughs> Hi there. Um, I guess I'll go next. My name is Avery. I use they them pronouns. Mm -hmm. nah. I just wanted to ask you about self-care for a little bit. So you've been doing this work for decades. So how do you sustain yourself and your uh, spirit to continue to do the work and kind of um, 
maybe if you want to touch on like what's your favorite type of self-care or way to recharge too well that's easy uh whatever pleasure that i can find hope as long not now but in usually i had depends on what boy i can get from in then you know so that of course rejuvenates me a whole lot <laughs> and I am simple. I don't need a whole lot of things. Um, a good TV show would suffice. A good murder mystery. <laughs> Something that um, I can put myself in, you know, and get out of it, what I do, whatever. And um, what keeps me going is that, you know, uh, because I find that if you can think about it, you know, and wish it was so, then that's the thing to do, you know. Um, I like strolls on the beach, you know. Since there's no beach here, I stroll out in the yard and pretend, oh, there's a pool and there's a beach. So, you know, things like that. Now, I don't mean that's special. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, sure, honey. <laughs> Okay, I'm next. Hi, Miss Major. My name is Hi. Faith. I use they, them pronouns. Um, so my question is, because I've listened to several of your interviews and I've um, seen how you've talked about the night at Stonewall and kind of some of the divisions there and mm -hmm. how that reflected the movement um, moving forward from there and even before that. So what conflicts or division within the LGBTQ plus community have held the movement back in the past and are still holding the movement back today? Uh -huh. The same thing that held it back then, fags. You know, I mean, you see one fag, you see enough of them, you know. They have a tendency to hold on to their belief that they started this. And it wasn't them that started this. The girls started this. Um, I, I just get upset when I think about them, you know. They're coming around slowly. Um, more often than not, I hope. But um, in general, that's what it is. It has been, you know. Um, it's kind of hard to believe that we must go on and deal with that stuff. And we are all on the outside of society, you know. Um, and that needs to change, you know. Society needs to accept us first and then the rest of them and i'm hoping that um this time they'll see it through to the end and include us because like i say if we ain't in it nobody's gonna be male. thank you so much for the question thank you you're welcome thank you miss major it's back to me again sure. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask if um, you've watched the Disclosure documentary on Netflix and, and what your thoughts are on that. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I've seen it and it's good, you know, but I don't know. It's not personal, I don't think, you know, so I'm so relatively skeptical about it, but um, it's worth clean the first time, you yeah. know. So, hold on. Okay, all right, now. So, that's it. <laughs> Do you have time for um, more questions? We want to be really respectful of your time. Oh, yeah, honey. I, I cleared it. I'm good. Good to go. So, okay. whatever you want. Yeah. Um. So, our next question is, what are you most proud of? What work do you most regret? Um, and then what work do you feel like was the most profound for you? Um, I guess, well, what I'm proud of is the fact that I'm still here. <laughs> that is very important. Um, and what I've, these, I guess what I would disrespect 
and feel uncomfortable with, you know, is the fact that they have ignored us for years from before 69, you know, um, 64 is when I got started. So all the way back to then. And um, I wish they would wake up and smell the coffee as they say, and realize that, you know, they have overlooked us. And I regret that, you know, that they have. And it makes me mad and I get upset about this, but um, what can you do, you know, except continue to fight? So I'm prepared to fight at any time over anything, okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Miss Major, hi. It's Holden. Hi. Pronouns. Um, and I have a question uh, for you sure. from, it's from somebody. Um, they say that you have an incredible legacy. Um, how do you want to see us carry that legacy forward? Are you kidding? <laughs> to, to carry it smartly, you know, be proud of yourself. Be proud of who you are, what you stand for, because you are carrying on your shoulders everybody that was around before you. And be ever vigilant and watch for misgendering and name calling and stuff and stand up to that shit. You know, always, always do that. And you, you know, are so young and such your life is such in front of you that you must always keep that in mind when you do this. And be prepared to fight if you have to, you know. Um, Hopefully sometimes it won't get to that, but if it does, be prepared to stand and hold your ground because your space is all that matters. You must be who you are. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome, honey. Hello, my name is Mary, my pronouns are she and her. Um, a question from the chat box that I wanted to uplift. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the pros and cons of the role social media plays in the movement today and likely will continue to play moving forward? And how can we ensure that this tool, that social media is used effectively? Well, you know, as far as social media is concerned, it's not very worrying, you know. Uh, they misgender us. They talk about us in the second sense, you know. But I guess to keep in mind that they are what they are, they do what they do, and to use them at your advantage. Always keep that in mind. And to, um, you know, I, I guess you can say that you have to use what is available to you, you know, to get across. And they are no different. They are not in our corner, but we can at least put them in a position to whereby they are in the sense for us, you know. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, hi, so it's David again. Um, and I wanted to ask about uh, Disclosure. There is a documentary on Netflix, and I was wondering if you had seen it, and what your thoughts were about that, like how you feel like as trans people we were portrayed, and like, I guess, yeah, how did that make you feel? I don't know why I've seen that. What is, what's the name of it? Um, it is called Disclosure. It is a Netflix documentary about how trans people are being portrayed throughout like film. 
Oh, I haven't seen that, but um, mm. I'm pretty sure that it's it's probably okay. <laughs> but uh, you know, we have to be careful with the so with the media, period, and the way they represent us is through word of mouth. He said he's transgender, so oh, we'll we'll make it about him, and. Until they have us on there, portraying us when we do it, then I'm a little skeptical of the way that they do, you know. But if it seems okay, take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> That's the only thing I suggest. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep one with you all the time. You know, always go to your children. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, honey. <laughs> I'm going to look for that thing now. So I'll find it and watch it. <laughs> I'll send you the link after. Okay. Yeah. Hey, send it back. Send the clipboard or wherever, and I'll be sure to get it. Okay? I'll do that. Yeah, I'll see it. Okay. Good. I can go ahead and ask the, another question from the um, sure. chat box. Somebody asked, sorry, I didn't see the name. <laughs> um, somebody <laughs> asked with folks, turning from, with, ter with folks turning from policing and carceral justice, could mm -hmm. you tell us um, how you uh, have practiced restorative and transformative justice and how we can better be in community without disposing of people? Well, you don't have to dispose of anybody, you know. Um, one of the things that I have found is that if you talk reasonably to somebody, there's a chance that they will talk reasonably back to you. If they don't uh, respond, that doesn't mean that you should go off on a tangent, you know. And as far as, you know, what works, you got it's give, always give and go. You try it, and if it doesn't work, you try something else. Um, the police don't do that. They um, are so in their guise of controlling who they are and what they do. They're mo they much rather see you on the ground than stand up talking to them. And it's important that you talk to people and you can sort of bend what to do. You know, it's not necessarily a thing of whereby you treat them a certain way and they're going to respond. You know, you have to give them a chance. And when you do that, you'll see that they will respond in kind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Major. Oh, sure. Hey, it's um, Michael again. My pronouns. Are, hey, my pronouns <laughs> are Z and Zier and Zim. Um, and I wanted to know if you could speak a little bit more to the importance of our organizing lenses to be intersectional mm -hmm. and how you've done this, how you've been able to make sure that intersectionality is at the forefront of how we do our work. Well, you know, um, I find it's really hard to sit down and pull it together to make sure that you're intersectional. And I find if you just go about things clearly and above board, it happens. You know, um, it's not something that I set and thought, oh, I gotta include this in there, you know. And people get it, you know. They may not want to, they may um, step away from it, but they do get it. And so I find if you make it clear to yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and then present it like that, they'll understand what you're talking about. They'll see that you're not trying to uh, pull the wool over their eyes more than, you know. And that is very, very important. 
what you do because people are skeptical. They are very theory of folks and especially us, you know, um, we can take things any way that we decide to put them in, they will misunderstand. So you make it clear so that there isn't any form of misunderstanding and they will get it. Now, that they'll tell you that they got it, <laughs> that's a whole different story, yeah. You know, it's, um, it's hard, but uh, it will to, to succeed, you know, it will happen, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, sure. We have another question here in the chat box from Kath, and it is, uh, what keeps you hopeful? Uh, I, you know, I believe in people, especially us, you know, um, and I have to say that eventually they will see it. You know, um, 69 was a very important movement as far as I was concerned. And the fact that some people got it and some didn't, it may be theory, you know, but, you know, it's been years since this happened. And it's starting to come around, you know, so maybe uh, in time it will get better and it'll be better for us. And as long as we are better, I'm better. So I have hope, you know, I don't want to give my hope up um, and become bitter and angry and anxious and everything that you get to because you've lost your hope, you know? So hold on to that. Uh, keep it near you because without it, there's nothing to fight for. Yeah, that's it all. Thank you for sharing that, Miss Rachel. Yeah. Hey, Miss Major, it's Holden again. Hi. <laughs> um, there was another question um, that folks offered up. The question is, uh, how have you navigated people demanding um, people demanding you to move in ways that are more uh, respectable? Yeah. Um, how have you How have you navigated that in the world? Uh, res what's respectable? <laughs> I'm not respectful. I the wish they would ask me some shit like that. No, I don't know about respect. Please don't need don't even give me that. Yes. Ask me to stop, stop cursing. No, I don't know. What do they mean? No, no such thing. Um Jim Tribe is you. I mean, maybe you're gentle and nice, but um, no, I don't know what that means respectable. What the hell? No, mm, not even. No, not in this lifetime. Not while I'm still alive now. No. Not yeah. happening. Yes to that. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, another question that we have is, yeah. What is your opinion of the world now kind of suddenly acknowledging that racism and inequality exists? It almost seems like overnight the world has learned the word anti-racist specifically um, and corporations are adopting things, organizations are um, taking these public stances. Everyone seems to have a book club now about uh, how to be anti-racist and uh, really acknowledging that in inequities exist. What are your feelings about all of that? Well, you know, <laughs> they jumped on a bandwagon because George Floyd. And the, I'm, I'm glad that they have. Um, they've kind of woken up, as you say. It seems quicker, but um, let's go back to, say, 1920. 
<laughs> it was there in 90, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. You know, no, they haven't all of a sudden woke up. Um, <laughs> they had taken this M. George Floyd, and because of whatever the reason is, I, I don't understand it, but he has taken this and shook them and made it worthwhile. Now, they don't talk about the number of gay people that have been killed, but they do mention us that have been killed, you know, and I didn't find that they took us and said, oh, we're not going to stand for this no more. So it doesn't matter that they took George Floyd. Okay, they took him. They got this. Yay. But it seemed as if for some reason uh, in the powers that be, they elevated him to the status of he's like we are. So there are now numbers of white people are involved in this surge that they have. They've started tearing down this uh, so white stuff, you know, and I assume and hope that that's right and it will continue. But um, to say that, you know, they've waken up, you know, finally, after years and years and years of uh, the abuses that we've gone through, let's hope, and I do, that um, they do something with it, you know. It's gone farther this time than ever before. So I'm hopeful that it'll be better and um, we'll get our chance to stand up into. Yeah, we will. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I have another question for you. It's Faith again. Sure. Of course. Um, so you are well known and appreciated um, in the community for your individual care that you give to a lot of the people that you interact with, to the girls. Mm -hmm. um, even Liam was telling some of us, you know, how you, you're, you're very personable. You're very personal when you connect with people. Um, when you were growing up, and when you got involved with community or maybe after you moved to New York City, was there anyone who modeled this for you or taught you this type of um, individual community care? Or was this just always a part of you and your personality? Um, it was always a part of who I was. I, there wasn't anybody around to say believe in or follow you know, their, their traits. Um, I've always felt like, you know, if someone's going through something, I could be going through it too, you know. And people need that, you know. Um, a lot of the girls need to be loved on and cared for and thought about, you know. So even in this pandemic, you know, I call everybody on my, in my list, you know, from time to time depending upon if I think about them, I call them, you know. Um, and that's important to them, you know. And I guess when they respond to that and appreciate it, you know, um, I felt worthwhile, you know. I felt that um, I've done something good in the world and it doesn't matter Jim or John, whatever, knows about it, you know. They don't have to know, you know. But the person who I call does. So, yeah, it's just me. <laughs> That's all to say. Yeah, thanks for that question. Thank, Thank you. you. And I think we can all learn from that, how important that is. Thank it you. It really is. Uh, because they need it, you know. Um, just a touch uh, from somebody means something. And right now we can't touch them, but 
but we can give them a call, you know, and tell them, oh shit, I was thinking about you. Um, you are out of my mind today, you know, and they'll respond, you know, and that counts. That counts. So I, I just finished reading Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis, and she mentions you in the book. Um, and I just wanted to ask about your relationship with Angela Davis and um, how you've been in communication to get w with each other throughout the years. Oh, well, you know, um, I met her years ago, well, not years ago, a few years back. And um, we connected on the fact that so many people she knew, I knew. And um, from there, it developed into a friendship, you know, and I called her on occasion and I talked with her and I keep it casual, you know, I don't call to, and we discuss politics or whatever, you know, we just talk and that is important, you know, for people you know, who are in the struggle and in the fight um, to realize that there are people too, you know, they're not some icon of whatever they have set aside. Um, they're people and that um, they need the same things that you need. So, you know, we keep it going, you know, we call from occasion, and uh, it's good, you know. It's what it, it's what it is. <laughs> that is a beautiful so thing. Thank Sorry. you. Go ahead, Avery. <laughs> <laughs> um, Avery again. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my puppy from screaming while I ask this. Um, <laughs> sure. If you could give two pieces of advice to young organizers. I know that I'm a community organizer and there's a lot of student and community organizers on the call. Mm -hmm. If someone asked you to narrow it down to like two major keys for young organizers, what would you want them to know? Uh, first of all, keep it personal, number one. And number two is be prepared to fight, you know. Um, I'm trying to get you get there and write a book uh, for that. And it is, you know, you've got to stay a comrade to them. You know, you're a friend, then you become comrade, and then you get in the struggle. So keep their things going. Um, always remember who it is that you're up against, you know, and what you're fighting for. And be proud of what you are and who you are and what you stand for and stand up proudly for that, you know. In adversity, it's even harder, but you, you can do it, you know, everybody can. And that's a beautiful dog. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> So Liam, who are you on the thing? I don't see you. I'm uh, here. Can you see me now? I'm here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think Michael has a question that I'll pass over to you. And then we, um, I do want to be respectful of your time. So um, you let us know. And I'll, I'm going to pass it to Michael. And if, if you're ready to go after this question. Um, okay. That'd be sure. Sure. Let's see, where is he? Hey, Michael. Yeah, hey, yeah okay. <laughs> hey, Michael. I'm on um, IZ and Zoom and Zier, and I am a very genderqueer drag performer, and I always love talking to people who performed and have performed, so I wanted to know when you were a drag performer, what was your favorite look? What was your favorite performance and vibe? Oh, God, my favorite, my favorite look. Um, was where the front slow and the back lead, but they did it. It did it. 
<laughs> it was right down to the crack of my ass. Lovely dress. But um, my favorite number, God, all my numbers are favorite. Shit, if I like it, I can do it. <laughs> so yeah. anything that cared to be, that I could do it, I did. You know, so, and after a while, I, I had to stop, you know, so. But uh, it was fun when I was doing it. <laughs> it was we fun. love it. We love to see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank the you. The last thing I did was, um, got in a St. Breakfast Church. That was the last one. You yeah. said on where? St. Breakfast Church in oh. California. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, sure. So um, I can't, I can't find you, goddammit. Where are you? There you are, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living this back and forth. And, you know, they have a thing. It'll be small, but I'll be on one page. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. So I'm going to go. And thank you so much for having me on here. I do appreciate this. And it is of just, a wonder to see so many young, beautiful, really involved faces on here. Um, it's it's just marvelous, you know. There aren't a lot of people my age who are still with me now, but God damn it, you all can carry to who it's for it for me. So thank you, them. So much. Thank you so much, Miss Major. We're all so grateful to be able to learn from your wisdom and be able to um, build on your legacy. Thank you so much for being on this call. Um, if folks want to extend their gratitude um, to Miss Major, feel free to do so. And thank you so much, Miss Major. And hopefully, we can do something in the future. I do. Oh, cool. This is this is the first one, number one. So take care. <laughs> I love you too. Be love safe. Be safe. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>
So you can find it at Amazon. And also Liam just dropped the link um, to the website for the film. I've seen it a bazillion and one times. And every time I watch it, I, I come up with like some new, like really beautiful gem or like learning about how um, about how I can like do this work in an even, uh, yeah, more critical and like deeply relational way. So definitely take an opportunity to check out that film. Um, and so wanna like offer up this time for people to give reflections um, about what you heard from Ms. Major. Um, Ms. Major dropped us with some like major gems, some things that, that I got just from the conversation was, right? We've got to, we've got to fight for what we want um, but even in that fight, right, there's a need for rest too, right? So it's important that we also rest even in the midst of knowing that we have to um, continue this fight to continue to uh, make sure that folks know that when we show up in spaces, we're showing up as our full selves, that our liberations are deeply interconnected um, to one another and that none of us can't get free without the rest of us. She reminded us um, that we should continue to always say fuck the police and fuck respectability, period. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Haven't heard of it. Who she? Don't know her. Haven't seen her, right? So yes to all of that. Um, and that there's power in our imagination. Um, and even in difficult times, we can, right, go for a walk and transport ourselves to a space that can actually be the joy and rejuvenation that we need, even in a moment of a difficulty and the gem that she leaves for us as young organizers is to right keep it personal relationship is everything right and that's from that relationship that we build camaraderie and that we can then really truly throw down for each other in collective liberation um and that we should continue to be proud of who we are and to also just uh really show up for what we believe in um and refuse to back down from that so that's just like a summation of just some of the amazing things uh, that came from that conversation. But want to open it up to the rest of folks to really just offer gratitude or, or things that really stuck out to you. Feel free to drop it in the chat too, and then one of us can say it out loud if you'd like. But y'all can talk now. We just didn't want anyone, you know, get in here and embarrassing North Carolina with Miss Major on the line. Y'all can talk. Mary. <laughs> Somebody got break, to break the ice. I'm just trying to help. I'm hollering. Um... I thought it was really nice, um, her answer to the question about how everyone's kind of like waking up now and it's just like, like her saying that she hopes that it's for real this time. And um, it's one thing for like, I know like myself as a millennial to kind of look around and say, this is like the biggest kind of conversation on inequity that I've ever heard happening. Um, Cause you know, like they're happening within our individual spaces and um, in these little in these little niches, but to have a global conversation um, where folks are starting to hold um, institutions and systems accountable is interesting. But um, for her to say that like in her lifetime, this is the biggest um, conversation that's happened really stuck out to me um, because I think about like sis you were at Stonewall like what I can't imagine that not you know rocking all of those communities and so that really stuck out to me and really put a lot into perspective hey y'all Mary she her I feel like something that comes up every time there's an uprising or a bubbling up in a public kind of way around um, anti-racism, homophobia, transphobia, all those things is a lot of ego. Suddenly you see these people who are out at the forefront, who always are the loudest, but don't necessarily do any of the work, who are, you know, they get all the like, um, the artwork made of their silhouette and they're just, 
still alive. <laughs> um, one thing that stuck out to me about what Miss Major said is, is just emphasizing how relational these things are and just her hearing her talk about like, oh yeah, I just casually, you know, occasionally me and Angela Davis talk. Um, like it just drove home to me that you really can't have hero worship and like inflated egos when there is true community. Um, it makes it very difficult uh, <laughs> and how beautiful that is and how much we need to live into that. Um, and I mean, I definitely hear her criticism of social media and I'm like, how can we um, like live into real community, like authentic community and transparency around the roles that people hold even in this like social media, socially distant world. So just some food for thought I'm chewing on. Thought I'd share. Hey, it's Michael, pronouns Z and Zim and Zir. I was really taken by two things. One, when she was talking about um, meeting Black and, like, the other Black Panthers, how, like, the state killed those folks. And I'm just, like, it occurred to me that, like, those folks died, but for some reason, I don't know why I thought it would have been of old age. So, like, hearing legends and folks who were there telling me what happened, like, confirms so many things that I've, like, in continuing to fill in the gaps of my learning. Um, and also, like, her drag dress like showed her butt crack. I'm so here for that. I love it. And it's, like, she said her last performance was at a church. Like, double love it like yeah living legends just out here meeting panthers and yeah showing cracks i love it i made those pictures yesterday oh also she said she was gonna write a book and i was just like ah. <laughs> i cannot wait Honestly, y'all, just to hear her say, like, oh, sorry, I'm H, my pronouns are they, them. But uh, just to hear her say, like, to carry her legacy, like, smartly, and, oh, man, you know, to hear her say, like, you know, you have to remember whose shoulders you stand on, like, every day you wake up, like, you have to remember that when you move through the world, like, you represent the people who came before you, you represent all the queer and trans people who are going to come after you like it's a responsibility and to hear her I, I feel in my life that it's my biggest honor and my biggest responsibility to be a queer person and to hear her say that was so incredible just really stunning i definitely resonate with that i think that hit me hard too and um yeah, it's a big responsibility and also a great privilege at the same time. From the chat, um, someone, uh, Asher said, really love the mention of gay men perpetuating harm and divisiveness within the queer community. Gay and lesbian folks have to stand with the trans community, especially trans women. The piece about um, respectability politics really spoke to my soul. Um, what respectable? That's just going to be my response from now on. Just what respectable? Um, wow. I don't know if this question has an answer, um, but I'm just thinking about what it looks like to do intergenerational work across the South. and how to, yeah, how to maintain community and even use the fact that people, the world has moved into Zoom so much. Like how can we be building community? How can we even be like moving aligned work and campaigns um, if you're into organizing? And yeah, I don't know. I guess my question is just like excited, excited that Miss Major joined us and excited for what what else could come from it in terms of moving shared work and yeah, living into what she said about this time being different. That's it.
can I shout out, um, sorry, Liam, take this away from me if need be. Um, but I really just want to shout out um, how awesome it is to see Radical Kindred like blossom um, and to know that this was a seed that that many planted um, in different formats and to know that it's a seed that like Liam watered and um, sorry, plants. Um, but to see it come to fruition is really beautiful. Um, and I'm really excited to figure out even what it looks like to to model uh, like rural, small town, um, like southern just intersectionality and like cross issue solidarity. I don't know. I'm just like, uh, what's next? I hope that y'all have all liked Radical Kindred on the Instagram and the, I don't know if y'all got a Twitter, but I know that's a thing. Um, the Facebook, um, they're doing some really dope care packages um, that you should apply for and, and take advantage of. Um, and then uh, also there, there's the Fundly link that I'll repost if you want to contribute directly to Miss Major. Thank you, Mary. I <laughs> I appreciate Mary's affirmation of Radical Kindred's work. Um, I am not the best at, at like gassing us up, but I am very proud of the work that we're doing and the, very proud of the folks that are working with us. Um, thanks to everybody who's on the call. Um, I, I think we have an opportunity here in, in Western North Carolina and Boone to change the landscape right now. And um, Things have grown so much in the past two years. Look at that sticker on the cup, okay. <laughs> um, things uh, have grown so much for Radical Kindred in the past two years. And, I, and I, I'm so excited to see where we're going. We have so much opportunity. We have so much um, energy and folks who are just like really dedicated to like being in struggle and community together in a way that um, feels, different than a lot of other spaces that I've been in and I think that comes from the energy of where this was born out of and the beautiful folks on this call who helped this come to be um, so thankful for y'all and and thankful for folks showing up on this call to to have this conversation and um, be in community with Miss Major as well and um, show her uh, respect and and um, grow on her wisdom also, I should mention also, I'm taking a step back in some of the uh, facilitation with Radical Kindred. Um, I'm moving in kind of more of a, a clinical uh, counseling role into my professional career. So the way I show up in Radical Kindred is starting to look a little bit different. And we're looking for folks um, to step up and that want to be in facilitation, that want to be in these conversations and help grow Radical Kindred. Um, there's room. Uh, uh, for for us to grow and we we're excited to have folks that want to join so if you want to be more involved in radical kindred's work um, please let us know because our arms are open we're ready to take in all the queer and trans kindred <laughs> Hey, it's Michael Zizem. I feel like I had noticed somebody trying to get off mic and wanted to make sure that, um, yeah, that folks had said what they wanted to say. If you're having trouble, you can also like raise your hand, uh, click that icon and uh, we can make sure that you're unmuted. I want to say thank you um, to all of you all for showing up um, and to share space with us. We really appreciate it. Your questions were amazing. Thank you so much for those as well. We have kept y'all for almost an hour and 10 minutes. If the energy is feeling low and y'all wanna, if there's no final um, questions or anything folks wanna raise, we can go ahead and um, start to close this out. Oh.
Okay, thank y'all. Holden, do, do you have anything you want to close us with on this? Um, you know what? Don't really think I do, but <laughs> um, I guess I just want to like repeat again, like definitely mm -hmm. um, support Miss Major through the Fundly. Um, if you don't follow her on social media, follow her on social media. I follow her on Instagram. It's great. Um, yeah, and also like yeah, and big ups once again to uh, Radical Kindred and much appreciation uh, for the work that folks are up to. Is there any type of like social media or anything for Radical Kindred you um, y'all want to drop or any like upcoming things that you want to point people to? Mm -hmm. I just dropped our Facebook link um, in the chat. If you follow us there, we post everything there. We also have Instagram, just at Radical Kindred. Um, we're very active on Instagram and social media, always sharing um, news, maybe, you know, not that's even specifically happening here, but just um, things that are going on in the trans and queer community. So thank you all so much for being on this call. If anybody's got any last words, pop in. I hope that y'all really enjoyed this and that this was um, a good, well, I don't know, afternoon call for y'all <laughs> what time this is. But I hope this um, gives you energy to carry into your work, into your community, and to grow on. Uh, we have we have a lot, a lot of work to do, and um, I'm excited to see what we do together. So I appreciate y'all. If you have any questions, you can email. Uh, radicalkindred at gmail.com. Remember, again, we're looking for those leadership roles. So if you're interested, slide in the messages. We're good. Sorry, I was checking the chat. I appreciate y'all. I hope you have a great afternoon. You are radical. You're dope. And uh, take care. <laughs> Bye. Oh, wait. Can folks pose for a picture? If folks feel like here and happy to be like, off of their like camera cam covered. Yeah, I would just love to capture this moment. So if folks feel cute, if you want to hop off, feel free to. I'm gonna go ahead and click this button. Oh, are we gonna um, stop recording and then take a pic? Oh, or I was just gonna click for the picture.